untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green plus one plus one counter aggro deck featuring four copies of Quirion Beast Scholar, a two mana 2-2 two -two from Dominaria, saying whenever we cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and when it dies, we get to distribute those plus one plus one counters among any target creatures we control. So awesome when played on turn two, and also curves very nicely into a turn three Kodama of the West Tree, 3-3 three -three legendary spirit with reach, saying modified creatures we control have trample, and whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So if a Beast Caller picks up a plus one plus one counter, it is considered modified. So turn to Beast Caller, turn three Kodama. We now have a 3-3 three, three Trampler that when it hits the opponent gets to search up a basic land to start ramping. So that's an incredibly powerful start. And then we've got some other usual suspects here, including the partners at 4 mana, a 2-3 with first rank and reach, and at the beginning of combat on our turn can give one of our creatures haste and x plus 1 plus 1 counters, where x is the partner's power, so any way we have of increasing the partner's power will also make its ability much more impactful. And of course we can move counters onto it with a beast caller when it dies. We have the reckless storm seeker, which at the beginning of combat can also give a creature haste until end of turn and one additional power, so it can get the partners up to 3 power, which then in turn can maybe give the Stormseeker 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And then at 4 mana there's Thundering Raiju, which also synergizes with modified creatures as a 3-3 with haste, and then when it attacks we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target which we control, and then the Raiju deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures we control other than the Raiju. And then at 1 mana there's Kumano, which on chapter 2 will ensure that the next creature we cast enters with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so all ways of potentially increasing the partner's power, and also making sure we have tons of modified creatures to synergize with Kodama. And then there's also Invigorating Hot Spring, a 3 mana enchantment that enters with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and says modified creatures we control have haste, and once each turn we can remove a plus 1 counter from Hot Spring and put it on a creature we control, so all ways of increasing the partner's power, and the Hot Spring also very useful for maybe giving a Beast Caller haste. Even without moving a counter, we might be able to cast 2 creatures, Beast Caller naturally picks up a plus 1 counter from its ability, and then it can attack right away thanks to the hot spring, even if it's depleted all its counters. And then we also have two copies of the Iconoclast from Dominaria, a 3-2 with Trample, can also be kicked for a red, in which case it enters with plus 1 plus 1 and haste until end of turn. We've got the Lizard Blades, 2 mana 1-1 one, one double strike that can be reconfigured onto a creature, counting as an equipment, giving that creature double strike as well, so that can also count as a modification for our various modified synergies. And a turn 2 Lizard Blades is awesome if we can play a turn 1 Kumano, as it will enter with a plus 1 counter, and then the dream is to play a turn 3 Kodama, and then the Lizard Blades with a counter will hit the opponent twice, getting two basic lands right away, and that's almost an unbeatable start. And then all that extra mana that Kodama can search up will also benefit our Shivan Devastator. X and a red for a Dragon Hydra with Flying and Haste enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, so it can be a great finisher in the late game. Although it can also be played for X equals zero if we just want to put an extra counter on the Beast Caller, so that's also an interaction that can come up. And then at one mana there's Ascendant Pack Leader, a 2-1, that will also pick up a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast a spell with mana value four or greater, so those include our various four drops as well as Devastator devastator if x equals three or more and then also has good modified synergy and then our removal spells include Kami's Flare, which can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, as well as 2 more damage to that permanent controller if we control a modified creature. And then 2 copies of Rending Flame, which can deal 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker, so this is specifically here to answer opposing copies of Shieldred at 5 toughness, which is otherwise pretty difficult for us to get past, and the life gain also makes it difficult to outrace. And then a mana base, of course pretty straightforward, lots of dual lands, including the new Pain land, which is necessary if we want to play some of our 1 drops on Turn one, couple basics, and then the channel lands, Crucible and Boseju can also come in handy. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Might be a little bit awkward because Veil comes into play tapped, so can't curve out perfectly. Although we could just play this tapped and then turn two play double Kumano. And then uh the Iconoclast turn after, maybe. If we knew for a fact we were drawing an unsap land next turn, then playing Kumano turn 1 is probably worth it. 
But uh, I guess we'll go with a tamped veil. Opponent on a red deck with Ronin. So more of an artifact theme. And there's a mountain. Still happily take it. Means we can either play Stormseeker or kick Iconoclast next turn. It will come into play with two plus one counters. So difficult for the opponent to take out with a burn spell. As they play their own Kumano. Which they must have drawn for the turn since typically this is a turn one play. Okay, I guess I'm liking Stormseeker here. We'll be able to maybe give the Iconoclast haste with the Stormseeker's ability. And we can maybe double spell our two drops next turn, which will be more mana efficient. So your opponent's in trouble. Alright, opponent actually has a Rending Flame. That's too bad. Opponent's prepared to kill Shieldred. So they were able to take out our 5 toughness creature. I'm just gonna kick Iconoclast here. Also have the option of Channel in Crucible, but we can maybe do that later. Opponent's still taking 8, despite having the best possible answer to Stormseeker. And uh, I guess now the drawback is Kami's Flare doesn't have a modified creature to go with it. Strangle kills Iconoclast, exiling it with Etching. And another Kumano. Ronin's not gonna help them on defense. So they're just gonna attack for 2 here. And partners seems like the play. And then that will also give us a modified creature and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Just need a third land. No one mana play. So it's not going to be the most explosive start ever. But being on the play makes up for it. Opponent Junt Colors, and yeah, I'll play the Blade since we can maybe kick the Iconoclast later. Turn 3 Stormseeker can maybe give itself haste or pumping the Blades also gets in a nice bit of damage. But I guess uh, giving itself haste gets in 3 extra points as opposed to 2. So their opponent off to a slower start. We can potentially modify our creature by reconfiguring Lizard Blades, so this deals extra damage. For now, Riveteer's Charm kills Stormseeker. And another Rending Flame, the pickup. Alright, let's kick our Iconoclasts. Two mana to reconfigure, so we won't be doing it this turn. And hopefully they just run out some creatures we can kill one by one. Don't need to fear Meat Hook Massacre anymore, at least. Unleash the Inferna, ouch. That actually kills the blades as well here. So that was the perfect answer. But luckily we found another creature here. Okay, let's see if we can recover from that uh, brutal 2 for 1. This is one of the better answers to Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And can also deal with the wedding announcements, so that's why it's seeing a bit of play now. Tracker we can take out. And just a land to draw. Probably hang on to Kami's Flare to maybe deal two damage with it if we control a modified creature later. Also have the option of passing the turn, letting it switch to night time. But our opponent's likely switching it back, casting two spells, and then we wouldn't be able to attack here. So let's Rending Flame the Tracker. And attack for three. Don't think our opponent has any spirits in their deck necessarily that we can uh, get to two extra damage from. Alright, so we get our opponent to 3, which is uh, close to dead if we can get one more attack in. Certainly have removal to clear a path. But it looks like our opponent has another removal spell at the ready. Alright, never mind, unlicensed hearse, that's fine. And maybe another unleash. Well, I can give the beast caller haste, potentially. Although they're probably killing the Stormseeker in response. 
Nope, we get to haste the beast caller. And then now if we cast a creature to give this a counter, we'll control a modified creature. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's got a lot of removal. No modified creature to go with Kodama. This isn't the worst if we can find a modified creature at some point, especially if we're up against another creature strategy, but it's not very proactive, and our deck doesn't really want to play a control game if it can avoid it, so this might actually be a mulligan. All right, this is much better. Although it's hard to put a card on the bottom here, since they're all so good. Probably Raiju, and then we can curve Kumano into Iconoclast into Kodama. And if we draw another 2-drop in the meantime, we can maybe save the Iconoclast and play it later with Kicker. Okay, so we're... Gonna have all the mana we need here, especially if we connect with Iconoclast with Kodama, searching up another land. Tenacious Underdog's fine, can still trample over it. And in fact, probably just want to exile Underdog with Kami's Flare thanks to Etching, get the extra damage from controlling a modified creature, as opposed to trading and searching up another land, which was the other option. So three mana could see Graveyard Trespasser, which we can still attack into with Iconoclast. Bonin just keeping up removal most likely. Alright, I'll go with Kodama. And then probably see removal on Iconoclast. Alternative was Blades, reconfigure the Blades. But this seems fine. Now, we don't have a great answer to Shieldred lined up here. I guess we can give our Kodama double strike to still attack into it. And there's Shieldred. Okay, I guess that's the plan. And then, don't think I'm attacking with both. Bonan does take the trade. So we get to trample over, get a land, and of course getting rid of Shieldred's a very big deal. Hopefully there's no second copy. If our opponent plays an Invoke Despair, I just sacrifice Etching and keep the Blades. It's gonna be a Liliana instead. Alright, we'll get rid of Etching here to the Liliana minus two. And Kumano can finish off Liliana, that's perfect. So we'll hit for two at our opponents. Do we see an Infernal Grasp, perhaps? We do. Opponent at four. And then Kumano, perfect for finishing off Liliana. And now they're at three, so any haste creatures of the top here are huge. Soren can make a life-linking vampire. That's pretty decent. And an Iconoclast of the top is awesome. Can kick it, we'll get a counter from Kumano. So now if I attack with just Iconoclast, they're forced to chump. Alright, trample over. Opponent gains two, up to one, so they're not dead. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely on the back foot now, with another 2-2 haste coming up. Darkness. No Meat Hook Massacre to worry about. And Abandoned Mire can maybe get back Shielded, but they won't be able to play it right now. So Trespasser's probably their best bet, and that might actually stabilize them somewhat. So might need another top deck. And a Stormseeker certainly counts. Oh, 
Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got an exciting hand. Pack leader into Beast Caller into Kodama. Is uh, close to the perfect draw. I guess a turn 1 Kumano, turn 2 Lizard Blades, turn 3 Kodama might be even better, but I'm not going to complain. So hit for 2, play Beast Caller. And then the Beast Caller gets a counter from playing a creature, and will count as a modified creature for Kodama, so we can get ahead on mana. Opponent might have a consider here. Yep, so on mono blue most likely. Kami's Flare, not enough to kill Hotijin. But it can maybe kill a Delver of Secrets if they're playing that. And getting off to a quick start is very important against their deck. Especially with a threat that keeps scaling over time. So I'll play Kodama, if it gets countered we still get a plus one counter here, so that's fine. But the extra mana that Kodama provides will then also work well with our Devastator. Hasty Iconoclast was another option, but if this works it's probably more beneficial. Opponent had the Essence Catcher. Playing this over Essence Scatter could mean that they're not running Hadi Jin, but uh, it's still a close call between the two. Since Hadi Jin, of course, giving spells a one mana discount, not the best synergy with an Essence Catcher. Okay, we found a land, opponent stuck on two, so I'll try Hasty Iconoclast. Probably would have been worth it to keep up green mana, although if they're bouncing a creature they're probably bouncing Beast Caller instead of Pack Leader, so it doesn't matter. Always have the option of casting Devastator for X equals zero just to grow Beast Caller, but it doesn't seem necessary here. So there's the Fading Hope, Bouncing, and Beast Caller. Still take six. Or is there another Fading Hope? Okay. And we'll pass a turn. Next turn we can either replay Beast Caller or go for the Hasty Devastator. Storm Chaser Drake, okay. So a slightly different build here. Well, we can double Kami's Flare to get rid of it, and even if they protect, we can still get past it. Now we don't control a modified creature, which is a bit of a shame. So I could also just go for Devastator, X equals 3, and still attack past the Drake. And then next turn we'll have a modified creature. That seems better. Of course I could still potentially phase out a bunch of our creatures here. With the uh, blue march, which is maybe a way they can still come back. But now having two modified creatures means even if they trade for one of them, Kami's Flare is still going to be online. Probably going to be a shore up here to trade Drake for Devastator. Still has them falling to one. So maybe it is going to be a march. Nope, slip out the back also makes sense. So it soaks up three damage. But it's still going to be an uphill battle for them at one life. So probably not a haughty Jin build as we suspected after seeing that Essence capture. Instead playing more cheap creatures like Storm Chaser Drake and various one mana spells to target it. So might also see a Ledger Shredder, Delver of Secrets, Comet Research also makes a lot of sense. But I don't know if they're in a position to attack. If they are attacking, it heavily implies a March of Swirling Mists to phase out our creatures. Although Kami's Flare in response will still kill them. So we'll move to combats. Opponent's gonna phase out our creatures, or at least attempt to. And in response we Kami's Flare to deal 2 damage. So our opponent's gonna have to pitch 2 blue cards, never mind just to shore up in response. That wouldn't really be enough, plus we can kill the Drake in response. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. Interesting decision in terms of sequencing my lands. And, um, yeah, now drawing Kodama kind of changes it. Slightly, perhaps. 
I think I'm still in favor of turn one pack leader. And then if we get lucky to draw our second land untapped, we can curve out. If not, I don't play Iconoclast, but I can play it kicked later since we didn't have a turn three play lined up at the time. Turn to Thalia does kind of get in the way here, but at least I can play Iconoclast. And then we'll be able to grow our creatures with the partners to eventually get past the 2 1 first strike. Peacekeeper, I guess, is going to make that a bit more expensive. But uh, at least we're still building up our board. And then eventually Devastator can fly over. If our opponent has a Sarah Paragon, that could be a problem card that we will need to take out, hopefully with a Rending Flame. So partner's going to cost 6 mana now. Unless we can kill the Peacekeeper. And Thalia attacks. We can double block it if we'd like. Trade for Iconoclast. Which may be worth it. So our opponent reconsiders. Hangs back. Nope. Still attacking. Yeah, I'll double block. And then a Kami's Flare's excellent. Do I want to play it now and attack? I think so. And then next turn, hopefully, play partners. Which will grow Pack Leader just from casting it. And then once again with a 2 plus 1 counters. Another Peacekeeper could potentially ruin the fun. It's going to be Adversary as a 4 2. That's fine. Beast Caller is also pretty nice, but can't pass up on the partners. And then I guess we're attacking here. Or do we want to wait and uh, maybe get some more value of Kodama? Could see that too. Especially if there is a Sarah Paragon in our future, we want to avoid trading for their creatures. For now the partners can block adversary profitably, so this attack implies either a Iganjo or a Wandering Emperor. So I'm just going to take four. Iganjo we can play around by getting our creature buff for toughness. This feels more like a Wandering Emperor to me. But uh, let's see how we want to play around that. I guess play Beast Caller. And then give it haste, and then just attack Beast Caller Pack Leader. Leaving partners back. And then we can also kill Adversary now with Kami's Flare. Right, it's going to be a Valorous Stance instead. Okay, so... Where do we put the counters here from Beast Caller? Probably onto partners. In case they still had an Iganjo to kill Pack Leader. And then pass it back. Most likely see removal on partners. Maybe a uh, Brutal Cathar, although we can kill it in response. Opponent does not attack. Alright, let's Kami's Flare Adversary then. Spend our mana. And then they might have another Wandering Emperor or Valor Stance in hand. And our opponent just concedes to the Kami's Flare. They know... What we have in hand, Kodama can search up a ton of lands thanks to all the modified creatures and then we can ramp out a huge Devastator. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and uh, hand seems keepable. We'll see how good our one-off Invigorating Hot Spring is going to be here. Pretty good with uh, turn two Lizard Blades and then partners can also benefit from the extra counter. Up against Red White. No turn to play. Maybe an Invoke Justice type of deck. Does seem that way. So let's Hot Spring. Count from Blades. Hit for four. And then next turn, Hasty Partners. Could potentially distribute three counters onto the Blades, so that would be amazing. Right, it's going to be a Fable. But a turn late. And yeah, Partners seems good here. Opponent's going to need a board wipe to recover. And this is probably going to be a chum blocking shaman. Authorizer opponent's taking 13. 
Now if there is a board wipe, we could still be in trouble since we don't have a follow-up creature. Can just make two one ones, I guess, with Crucible. And now we could also see Wandering Emperor exiling the blades. Put on discards double warden, definitely points towards Invoke Justice. Although that's a five mana play. And our Fiend's Informant we can very easily kill here with Kami's Flare. So unless there's a follow-up, this might be game. Opponent also needs to keep hitting their land drops. There we go. But uh, yeah, I would argue this Hot Spring did a lot of work. Can even add a Stormseeker, but don't really need it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing a one or two mana creature, but I think it's still a keep overall. Ideally, find something we can play early, but at least we have a Kami's Flare to kill an opposing two mana creature. It's gonna be an Azusa's Many Journeys for ramp. It's opponent on a ramp deck. Okay. Maybe an enchantment green white deck here as we see a wedding announcement. Do I want to take it out with Kami's Flare? It's a bit drastic. I think we keep Kami's Flare to kill the 3 3 Azusa. And then for now, Stormseeker attack. Now, is Azusa a spirit? Nope, just a human monk. Just double checking in case we can deal extra damage with Rending Flame. So, Punan definitely on the front foot here. It's gonna be a teaching. Token attacks. An announcement makes another one. So most efficient play would be Raichu. Although it would end up trading for the likeness. So maybe we pass and then plan is to kill likeness and keep Stormseeker back to block so they can't easily draw with the wedding announcement. And then it also switches to Knight, which has its advantages. So hopefully they target the likeness so we can kill it in response. Nope, just goes for the 1-1. Borrow times, unfortunate to see. So now probably kill the likeness. Opponent is going to attack. Announcement is going to transform as well, giving the team plus 1 plus 1. Can play Raichu and Smash, and then next turn maybe Partners. Although we're not currently winning the race, that's for sure. A Rite of Harmony upkeep before Teaching transforms so they can draw. At least they've been stuck on three lanes, so they might not be able to fully go off with the right. Visionary will draw. And hit us for seven. Back to daytime. And another right through the draw. Can't afford to attack with all, since then we die on the way back. Any spirits here? Snake monk, snake druid. Don't think Rending Flames necessarily the move either, so I guess Partners. And then if it doesn't get removed, it can hold off an attack. Although we would still be dead if our opponent takes it here. So I might have to play Partners and pass. Although we're playing into the late game, which favors the opponent at that point. I guess an alternative is Kodama attack and then have Rending Flame available too. Sure, I guess I can buy that. Can put counter on Kodama, and if they double block, we can punish them. And we also get more lands to maybe double spell next turn with our four drops. Still dead to removal on Kodama, but that was going to be hard to beat either way. So do we let this attack? 
They can make a 1-1 one, one token by exiling a creature, which they can. So I should probably kill the 2-2 two, two here before they get a chance to turn it sideways. And then it's no longer lethal attack. Fall to two. Naturalist to play. And another many journeys. Okay, but they're probably out of lands given their previous turns. Still a one mana visionary just to play it on defense despite being legendary here. Okay. So can't double spell, unfortunately, and at two life, it's going to be difficult to survive. So we're probably dead here. Partners versus Raiju. I guess Raiju makes more sense. Thank with all. And then we want counter on this Raiju. Target to Raiju once again. Maybe the one damage from Kumano can catch them off guard, but I doubt it. Opponent's gonna gain three up to four. We do get to search up lanes, but they come into play tapped. And Kumano puts the opponent to three, but we die to the tokens. So yeah, ended up being kind of a close game with our opponents not fully being able to uh, play out their lanes, but the early wedding announcements and borrow time was just too much for us to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Well, if we draw third land, B Scholar into Kodama is an excellent start, so we'll try it. Alright, there we go, perfect. Up against Mono Blue. It's important that we're off to a good start. Turn one, consider our Fading Hope. Looks like Fading Hope. That is a setback, so we won't be able to quite curve out with Kodama now. So Stormseeker, turn three, probably going to be the play. At least the Werewolves can punish the opponent for keeping up counter spells. Looks like blue-black instead. Fair enough. Still going to Stormseeker here. And preferably it gets removed by spot removal as opposed to a counter spell, since now we don't introduce the day and night cycle for the second Stormseeker. Okay. Hottie Jin, so opponent is still a Hottie Jin deck. And then now what do we like? So Kumano can set up a modified creature for next turn. Probably want to be mana efficient and go a 3 plus 1. And then I guess Stormseeker to set up the day and night cycle makes more sense. And I can attack into the Hadi Jin, since our opponent might respect a uh, one mana burn spell to finish off the 2 4. Opponent takes it. And put him to 16. But uh, yeah, opponent untapping with a Jin that we can't remove is still scary. Opponent passes, it is night time at least. Now whatever we play probably gets countered, so let's go with Kodama. Resolves, bump it up. And see if we get to attack. If it does connect, great. That means we get to search up another land. I don't think Slasher attacks now, since they might be able to grow Hot Agen twice. Alright, it's going to be Rona's Vortex with Kicker to get rid of our Kodama. Alright, well we can keep doing this for a while I suppose. Now we have an etching as well. Four drops seems more mana efficient than uh, anything else, so between partners and Raiju. I guess partners is more valuable if it sticks around, so we'll go with Raiju, see if there's another counter spell. Although this could still attack. So pump etching, Raiju can put a counter on itself, and yeah, opponent packs it in. 
So yeah, not sure what they were holding, but the werewolf definitely good at punishing these types of decks. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is missing a 2-mana creature, but I think it's still a keep. Could decide to postpone Kumano by a turn, so we get a counter on Stormseeker. Although now we have a wolf we can play. So turn 1 Kumano, turn 2 Pack Leader. I guess the alternative was Pack Leader, turn 2 Kumano to grow Stormseeker. Which was also reasonable. Opponent green white enchantments, perhaps. So I don't mind Pack Leader getting a counter so it can attack past 1 1 tokens from wedding announcements. And Kodama is also quite nice. So that will give our Pack Leader trample so we can also search up an extra forest. The next turn we can double spell more easily. And then important, we keep a modified creature to enable Kami's Flare, which will also quickly add up. Second announcements, that's fine. So yeah, Stormseeker plus Kami's Flare. Can wait to see how our opponent blocks, I think. And potentially punish a double block. Opponent's just jumping. Okay, fair enough. We'll let that happen. Search up a land. Does that imply a sweeper in our future, perhaps? Who knows? It's going to be resolute reinforcements. That's okay. Not sure why they main phased it. For now, probably fine to kill the 1-1 uh, one, one here, exile it with etching so they can get it back in case they're playing Sarah Paragon. And then could channel Crucible for 3 mana as we control a legendary. And then what if we attack with a team here, maybe pumping a 1-1? One, one. That seems fine. And again, wait for Kami's Flare in case we can set up our opponent double blocking. So I guess we'll Kami's Flare this one so we can trample over for lethal. Still have a Kumano for one more damage too. Got our revenge on green-white enchantments. Alright, so we got to see our Gruul aggro deck in action, and pretty pleased with where it ended up. Of course, a ton of tweaks can be made to this list, a lot of numbers can be changed according to your preferences, so feel free to experiment with the deck. But uh, the core of Beast Caller with partners seems like a pretty good one. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.